A lot of people who start eating plant-based later on in life are accustomed to putting quite a bit of meat on their plate. So I'm gonna show you how to enjoy some beastless eats without having to rely on those fake meat products that you see in the stores and in restaurants. From a delicious tofu fried rice to tempeh meatballs, and we're gonna go to Henry's Tempeh to see how they make this meat replacement. Very hot, so you're not gonna grab this. Oh, okay, I, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll resist the urge to grab the steaming hot special gloves for them. But first, let's go to my kitchen to show you how to make one of my favorite beastless eats. All of today's recipes are available on pbwithj.ca. For years, I just cut tofu into squares and rectangles, thinking that was what you should do with it. But recently, I've been experimenting with doing different textures for it. And this one is my new favorite. And what I do is I shred the tofu. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make what I call a dirty tofu stir-fried rice. I'm gonna grate the tofu using like a cheese grater. And it's gonna create these beautiful little shreds. I'm doing a double batch, so I'm doing two blocks here, but normally you would just use one. So once that's all shredded up, we're gonna create a wet rub to toss it in. So what I've got here is two teaspoons of chili powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then to this, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of water and a tablespoon of tamari. You could also use soy sauce. Stir it together until you don't see any dry clumps. What we're gonna do now is pour it into our shredded tofu, and then we're gonna stir it around. You wanna to try to get it so there's no white bits left, or at least you see a little bit of that color on every single piece. Now, just spread it out so it's even across the pans and it bakes evenly. And then we're gonna bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. And while that's happening, you're gonna cook a grain of your choice. I like to use rice. So our tofu is finished cooking. As you can see, it's got this really beautiful crisp edge on it. It kind of resembles what I would think of as like a pulled pork or a chicken. Mmm, delicious. So first we're gonna make our sauce. So what we have here is about three tablespoons of plum sauce. To this, I'm adding a quarter cup of tamari. You could also use soy sauce. One teaspoon of rice vinegar. And one teaspoon of cornstarch. This is gonna act as our thickener. So we're gonna mix that together. This might be a two utensil stir. We also wanna make sure that plum sauce is not just kinda hanging out at the bottom there. We got our pan heating up nicely. So we're gonna add an onion, about three cloves of garlic, and about one inch of grated ginger. And we're just gonna stir that around and let these things get nice and translucent. So these onions are getting nice and soft and a little translucent. We're gonna add in our tofu mixture. In with the onion and garlic, and then we're gonna pour in half of that sauce. Now we're gonna mix that all around until it's nicely incorporated all through. That smell, look at that. That is happiness. So now we're gonna take this and just dump it out really, really quickly. Now I'm gonna use just a little bit of oil. This is sesame oil, and this is pure flavor for me. It does help things not stick, but sesame oil just gives it that dirty takeout flavor. I'm gonna add a shredded carrot and about 16 ounces of shredded red cabbage. We're gonna let this cook down for about five to 10 minutes until it's the texture that you like. Now we're gonna add that tofu mixture with the onions and the garlic and the ginger back into our pot. We're gonna add in two cups of cooked rice. If you have cold rice in the fridge, it's all right. Um, this is fresh rice, but it's okay if it's a little clumpy. It just adds to that dirty, mixed up, takeout feel that I'm kind of going for with this dish. So now we're gonna stir this down and mix it all around. Now we're gonna add in the rest of that sauce we made. I love that sound it makes. Plop! It says, I'm here, I'm sauce, and you're gonna love me. The finishing touch is just one tablespoon drizzle of sesame oil. I usually don't use oil, but this is one of the rare exceptions where I'll put it in the dish because it makes it taste killer. Spoon some in a dish for yourself. I like to finish this with some green onions and some peanuts. There's so many little subtle flavors going on there. That sauce is really, really delicious. And the peanuts and the green onions at the end just add this little extra kick of flavor. There's this fattiness from the peanut. 
and the green onion gives us this brightness. Shred your tofu and make yourself a delicious, dirty tofu fried rice. Today, I'm visiting Henry's Tempeh located in Kitchener, Ontario, and was interested to learn that it didn't start here. Henry's Tempeh was started on Salt Spring Island by the original founder of Henry's Tempeh, Henry Schmidt. It was actually his daughter's idea. Um, I'm not sure where she came upon Tempeh uh, way back then, um, but she kind of pitched it to Henry, her father, and they started producing Tempeh on the island on the west coast. And after a few years, uh, she moved on and Henry moved the business to Waterloo, Ontario. And uh, it became Henry's Tempeh Inc. And that was in 2002. Really just one of the pioneers of showing people what Tempeh could be. Phil has been with the company for 10 years, six of which he's been a co-owner. I was working production every day and learned everything from scratch and became a Tempeh maker. <laughs> For those unfamiliar, tempeh is a fermented, high-protein, plant-based food that is typically made with soybeans. And in North America, it's becoming a very common meat replacement. It allows the cook to really use their imagination and to craft that piece of tempeh into really any meal or any idea that they have. Um, you know, from pudding to hummus to even ice cream to tempeh bacon, chilies, lasagnas. It's just endless, it's really versatile. Uh, it's a minimally processed product. It's a very clean ingredient. That's how you make tempeh, I think. You have to respect how tempeh is actually made. And today, they're gonna show me all the steps and put me to work. With tempeh, because it is so minimally processed, you need a very clean soybean. Not many people know this, but uh, growing soybeans in Ontario is actually a very sustainable process. Our yield per acre is very high compared to other parts of the world. But you're able to just take advantage of that and make it here. Yeah, it's amazing. We can uh, make tempeh with uh, Ontario beans and send it across Canada. Our product right now is sold all the way to Winnipeg. And then we're in Quebec, Ontario, New Brunswick, PEI, Newfoundland. We've uh, brought our water to a rolling boil and we're gonna add the raw milled soybeans and uh, essentially cook them. All right, if you want to grab one of these, take the lid off. Getting a good workout today, Jeremy. It's great. It makes you feel like a wizard or something using a cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> Put our soybeans in the boiling water. We're going to stir it up just a little bit. And we're actually going to try to capture some of these hulls. And we've actually had people come asking us for this so that they can add it to their compost at home. But Oh, wow. Is it really good for, for compost? You can even grow mushrooms using this as a base. We've uh, cooked these soybeans. We've drained them of water. And now we're drying them to an acceptable uh, dryness. And uh, we're also watching for the temperature. Temperature is very important because we are gonna eventually inoculate these beans with our starter culture. We still gotta mix it a bit. You're gonna have to maybe help us out here. I'm gonna start with, oh my God. Yeah, and you don't wanna go too deep down in there. Yeah, I just learned that trick. Don't go too deep. I guess what you're looking for is just that it's all crumbled up and it's not any lumps, right? Yeah, and we don't want any hot spots in there. We wanna make sure it's cooled uh, uniformly. You made this look easy. <laughs> I'm very strong, Jeremy. This part's pretty easy, eh, Jeremy? Yeah. Push the button situation. I decided to reach out to Henry's Tempeh because I've actually been making tempeh myself for a number of years. I'm super interested in fermented foods. I kind of run the daily operations here. I'm also responsible for our food safety. Okay, so this is our starter culture. It's a fungus called Rhizopus oligosporus. And essentially what this does is it's kind of like a yeast, like when you add yeast to bread. We're gonna add it into the tempeh beans right now. We're gonna mix it up. And that's gonna enable us to actually ferment the beans. What happens is overnight during the fermentation process, this forms, it's essentially like its body, which is called a mycelium network. And that's actually what binds the beans together. That's that white stuff. Cake. Yeah, yeah. The white really stuff, cool. that's the technical term. Yeah, it's like a mushroom basically that's growing in, the, in, in amongst the beans, holding them together. So now we are gonna load our beans and measure them into uh, pans. Take these pans and put them into our incubators. But that perfect environment in the incubator That'll activate our culture, and uh, in the morning, it'll, the soybeans will be bound together by the mycelium network. 
So this is really cool because the fungus actually digests the beans a little bit for us first. So it causes a bunch of nutrients that aren't normally that available in soybeans to be available to the body. Another thing that's awesome is that the fungus naturally degrades anti-nutrients that are found in soy. So those anti-nutrients normally make the beans not as digestible for people. So then what happens is we have something where nutrients are more available and the things that would make the nutrients unavailable are also gone. So it's kind of like a double whammy in terms of digestibility for people who are eating soybeans. The next day they bake the tempeh for about 20 minutes to bring it up to 85 degrees Celsius. And if it doesn't go up to the right temperature, you just leave it in longer? Yeah. There we go. So you can see it's above 80, which is our target. We're good. It's pasteurized. Very hot, so you're not going to grab this. Oh, OK. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll resist the urge to grab the steaming hot pans. Uh, we're going to put it in the cooling room next door. So you just grab a hunk off the line. I'll come in kind of daily and uh, try the tempeh. And... and because this is pasteurized and it's cooked to that 85, yeah. really, you can eat it just like that. Yeah, yeah. So off our line, you can eat it. It doesn't taste amazing, like cold from the fridge. So we it's definitely just... recommend cooking it. Well, I've never had it that fresh before, where it's still, it's got such a nice round flavor and texture. If I don't eat it for a few days, I start to think about it, and I just want a raw bite of tempeh, so. So there you go. So go for it. Just grab a hunk. It's a nice little snack you put in your backpack. But you know, you could. You, <laughs> You probably want to flavor it. Now let's head back to the farm to show you how to use this delicious and healthy product. You can just take tempeh, slice it, marinate it, and fry it up and make a delicious TLT sandwich. But some magical things happen when you transform it. So today, we're going to make tempeh meatballs. We need a binder for these meatballs, so the first thing we're going to do is make a flax egg by taking a tablespoon of flax, and then mixing two and a half tablespoons of water. And then we're just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. I already sauteed a small onion as well as three cloves of garlic. So you'll wanna do that before you get started as well. First, we're gonna take a block of tempeh and we're just gonna throw it into a food processor and mix it up. Yeah, that's what you want. Like a little meal is kind of what you want. And then we're just gonna add pretty much everything else in. That's the onion and garlic, a teaspoon of both dried basil and dried oregano, that flax egg, a half a cup of whole wheat breadcrumbs. I'm actually using panko here. And then I'm using a third of a cup of some plant-based Parmesan cheese that I had already made. You can find the recipe on my website. And last but not least, two tablespoons of tomato sauce. We're just gonna blitz that up until it's nicely combined. Quick little taste. Mmm, I like it. Okay. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna remove the blade so we don't turn this into a medical show. And then what I'm gonna do is I've already pre-mixed some of those breadcrumbs and my plant-based Parmesan cheese. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a tablespoon and we're gonna make little balls. About golf ball size is kind of what we're looking for. Just roll with your hand, toss it inside that breadcrumb mixture and just roll it around until it's nice and coated. And then you're gonna do that for the entire mixture. So after all your balls are shaped and... <laughs> after all your meatballs are ready to go, we're just gonna fry them very lightly in a nonstick pan, just until there's a little bit of brown all around. You probably have to do it in a couple batches. And then we're gonna bake them in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. So these have been cooking for about 15 minutes in the oven and they are perfectly crisp all the way around. You can use these however you usually use meatballs. You can make a sandwich out of these. You can put them on top of pasta. Put them in a salad. I recommend them with a little bit of sauce. It's delicious. That basil comes through beautifully. The texture is delightful. And there's a nice little crisp from that breadcrumb. Smash these into your mouth today. All that eating plant-based meals means is that you get to enjoy Beastless Eats. For these recipes and more, go to pbwj.ca.